Greetings, everybody. This is Joanna, and this will be our very first shamanic tarot offering. Thank you so much for joining us. I um, wanted to come forward in great excitement and inspiration to offer what my interpretation is of shamanic tarot. Um, I've been involved with tarot for many, many years. It's one of my first metaphysical tools that I started out using. And it's been a profound tool for me to explore and honor who I am through my um, intuitive awakening process and the human ascension process. And I was really excited to um, offer um, from my heart to yours many of the shamanic gifts that I've gained over many lifetimes um, through many planetary realms and to bring them forward um, through inspirational offerings through the Christic heart vibrations that we are um, that we are all awakening to, the light body, the Adam, Adam, Eve, and time particles that are all within us that is the movement of these light frequencies of who we are within our DNA and our chakras. And we offer many teachings um, about that on our other website. But this will be specifically about shamanic tarot. And shamanic tarot is the combination of um, the subtle intuitive energies from the Gaia consciousness um, using various tarot cards and the, um, all of the consciousness groups that are with Gaia to create new life forms, new planetary forms that will support and be that co-creative um, blessing of movement between the human collective and Gaia's um, reforming, reshaping, recreating um, who she is within the ascension process. And so it's important that, um, you know, in, in my experience is that we grow and expand with our growing, expanding, um, and ever-shifting bodies, our multi-dimensional bodies, the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the etheric. So on this channel, we will also offer um, ASMR, sacred sound and light language tones that will assist in um, the clearing, the cleansing, the realignment of the multi-dimensional bodies, the axial lines that um, are um, the basis of healing um, practices in many um, um, uh, medicinal practices that we'll use sacred sound. We'll use the sounds that I will be intuitively guided to, as well as the sacred Ur language, the UR, as a very, very sacred language, um, very, very ancient, that I will be using um, through my continued awakening. It is one of my gifts and one of the many lifetimes that I've held to bring forward the sacred light language so that it can be threaded and embedded into the new crystalline grids, embedded into um, the planetary consciousness, because Gaia has a consciousness in everything. Our, in our awakening, our understanding, and our entanglement will be a part of these tarot readings. And so as you awaken and understand who you are as a multidimensional being, then then it's um, natural progress and evolutionary um, 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 exploration to understand yourself within the all consciousness, the consciousness of the planet, the consciousness of plants and herbs and floral, animals, and we're given symbolisms and energetic stories within it all as we shift and change and expand. So the idea of shamanic tarot is the higher vibrational experiences through consciousness energies to read the symbolisms um, i tap into the collective consciousness i tap into the gaia consciousness as well as the children's consciousness as the collective because being a crystalline child um, that's part of my offering to bring forward the higher expanded um, uh, explorations and many of the um, the concepts about crystalline children indigo children that um, are all coming to the surface now to assist humanity into um, a greater evolution. And so the shamanic tarot will be the exploration of these expanded energies, who we are as a multidimensional being, exploring into a greater, grander, shifting planetary body of energy. And we'll offer them um, on a weekly basis. I'm hoping to do this daily. Um, we'll tap into the message on a daily basis. And then I'll also offer evening um, healing. Um, experiences and the healing experiences will be softer um, a bit darker environment and they will include ASMR and we will provide the um, clearing how to clear the fields um, um, very really you know quick short um, audios and videos and using sound and sacred light language and sacred tones that go into the consciousness body of Gaia 
as well as your multidimensional fields, and then um, hopefully inspiring those who so desire to begin working with their multidimensional fields in different ways. For the intention of exploring, expressing, and honoring all that we are as love and light. And for me, that's what um, shamanism really is. It's taking the practice of all that we've learned in, in any different modality and earth lifetime, which is one of the first lessons that I was taught many, many years ago um, on the radio um, show when I was doing my radio shows um, with KCOR, is that part of the humanity's evolutionary um, intrinsic um, experience right now is to take all that we've learned um, from other lifetimes, whether it's shamanism, medicinal practicing, um, and everything in our socioeconomic program that will be touched by love and light, by the, by the highest purified, rarefied energies and codes of light. And as we do so, those that are here to expand upon what we've had, create something new and expand upon it even further so that these new consciousness templates of a higher vibration can be co-created. And it can't be co-created until we create that energy with the all first, because everything begins as energy. The physical things that we see are the tangible co-creative um, combining and harmonization of thought forms and energy. The thought forms and matter come together, then thus therefore creating those things that we see as the physical manifestations. But we need to create it and be the vessels and be the bridges of that physical exploration. And why many of us have come forward with the vibrational gifts that we have from the many lifetimes that we've had so that we can come forward and really push the envelope to bring forward um, many different versions and perspectives of what shamanism is but to put it in brand new ways of a fifth dimensional perspective so that we at the fifth dimensional frequency can begin exploring who we are in new ways at a heightened level and expanded level that includes the earth energy um, trees and wisdom energies the gaia consciousness as well as the fairies and pixies and all of the consciousness groups that we've always been a part of to truly bring it into our moment for moment living because it must um, to for us to be balanced and well and healed um, it's a it's it's a it's a unified process and that's what um, that's what ascension is it's us reunifying with all that we are we are holographic cells of source creator the holy mother the holy father spirit the universal energy the creators, however we want to define it, those balanced of male and female energies at the God level being harmonized into a whole one. And in that harmonization, we're releasing all the densities, we're releasing energies that no longer serve, belief programs, limitations, greed, fear, subjugation, everything that we're being triggered with will assist us in harmonizing into ever greater expanded harmonizations of male and female God light bodies. And it must come from the energies that were being offered from Gaia, the energies were being offered from the collective consciousness groups, the collective human family group, the collective children's group that will be adding such wisdoms and, and beauty and to bring these to the forefront and have it be a part of our everyday communication and conversation so that we begin to create those templates of beauty. And so these will always be offered in sacred space. These, these spaces are um, <clears throat> one that are, um, called in the Christ consciousness, all of the heavenly bodies and councils, as well as your healing teams now in future now moments. So if you watch this again and again and again, it's always um, a good idea to get used to working with your soul as a team, the soul to live through you, through the many gifts that your soul offers. Because when we are offering information forward, it's those aspects of our soul that are coming out to live with us in this moment. That's what's being multidimensional is all about, is understanding that you walk in physical form, but that you are a multidimensional sacred geometry that is a soul of many lifetimes, many gifts. This is why many of us come forward with more than just one gift, because we're now living as the soul, the harmonized, unified soul. And we're living as our higher self, walking forward in this. And so we hope that you enjoy this beautiful sacred session um, of the um, shamanic tarot. At the end of this, we will always um, um, offer a sacred sound. And this sacred sound is brought from the um, alphabet of the ark a very sacred language brought forward by um, one of my colleagues maya nartumid who has been a channeler with toth um, hara for um, most of her life and she's one of our foremost teachers on metaphysical ancient informations and wisdoms and in this um, always been such a beautiful um, example of 
um, wisdoms and, and reverence. And I'll be using um, one tone and one sound that I'll be bringing forward um, to have it move into the consciousness of the human collective. And therefore um, being offered as um, being offered as a sacred sound for alignment and healing. And so we're just grounding. Calling in the highest universal energies once again to be with us in the sacred space in the sacred moment so that we as a human collective honor the sacred wisdoms and the sacred intelligence as we explore who we are and express who we are and experience who we are as multidimensional sacred beings of love and light in human form experiencing ourselves as a beautiful spiritual essence of source creator omnipresent beings with intelligence and wisdoms beyond our understanding but now that we are able to open and explore all that we are in new ways through the intuitive wisdoms that come forward to us in every moment that we open our hearts and we allow ourselves to entwine and entangle with the beautiful essence that is source in all things in all moments and through divine sacred breath we are aligned and we are centered and we are grounded with the sands and soils in our oneness with gaia in our oneness with gaia we call forward the shamanic frequencies and energies and informations and wisdoms from all of the Gaia consciousness, the Elohim, the ascended masters, the archangels, to come forward and be with us in this moment to bring forward the energies through the cards and our messages for today. I have already shuffled these before. Coming forward with the messages for the collective today, for the shamanic tarot. What wisdoms and information and synchronicities and majesties can come forward for us today that we tap into our heart space, we tap into the multidimensional allness that we are as we live and explore with Gaia, as we live and explore with all nature and wildlife, as we live and explore with all consciousness aspects of life that is source living through us, in the joy and excitement to co-create new fields of light. And we ask the heavenly bodies and the heavenly angels, the Holy Spirit creators, to speak with us in this moment of now for our co-creations and the excitements that we carry to expand who we are and our knowledge of our oneness with the earth, our knowledge with nature, our knowledge with the forest and all wildlife. Messages that like to come through for the collective in this reading. Thank you. and the beautiful tree wisdoms. We'd like to call upon the trees in the forest. We'd like to call upon the consciousness of all that is to assist us in harmonizing how we are multidimensional beings and our co-creative experiences with the forest and with the trees and all the flora and fauna and how it can relate to our individual lives as we move about our everyday life. How may these higher vibrational informations and wisdoms, the sacred sound, the sacred song that is source living in all things, and how may we expand who we are so that we see our reality as a tapestry of magic, as a tapestry of the sacred song of source, so that we open our eyes and our hearts and all that we are to the beauty that is Gaia and live in peace and unity in this. Thank you, Gaia and the forests and the trees. And we're going to call upon three spirit animals to assist us as they move about the planet in their unique ways, whether it's in the water, whether it's in the ground, whether it's above the ground, so that the spirit animals be with us in this moment so that we allow all that we are as an individual being, recreating the remembrance of who we are as a unified body of universal essence. And we use the shamanic energies to remind us through our DNA, through our fields, through our sounds, through our codes, through all that we are as a multidimensional being to awaken our oneness, to awaken our beauty, to awaken the shamanic energies that lives and breathes within us, awaiting to entangle, awaiting to be activated and ignited through all that is around us. And the councils and the beans are reminding me through these channeled messages that we are offered the environments and exactly where we are is no accident. So depending on where you live, and many are being um, inspired to move so that they can co-create with their environment in greater ways. But they're reminding me that 
there is no accident to where you live and where you are so that you have the gifts and you have all that you need to start interacting with that environment in different and new ways to bring about what is required through you in these co-creations. So just remember and know that look at your reality from an expanded perspective and that all that you are and all um, that encompasses your, your experience, your reality experience is created by you. And you have the gifts of all that you are as an omnipresent being to bring forward and live in a brand new way in a very multidimensional heightened energetic perspective. And it's very magical and it's very exciting. And so we'll start off with the first earth energy card. And this is one of my favorite cards. It's the ace of bows, the spark of life. And the ace of bows, the spark of life. And we'll see the, the elements there. And the first thing that is um, coming out to um, the energies that are coming off right here is um, first, first what's coming to me right now is this rock here, which, um, the energy, the rocks, I've always um, had this beautiful consciousness, um, as we've talked about in our radio shows, those that follow any of our teachings. And the rock consciousness is telling me and showing me um, our oneness with the rock consciousness and how important it is for our grounding, how important it is for us to remember that in the very basic elements of life that we are a part of, and how it's very vital for the descending power, which is our grounding power, to be lived through our multidimensional bodies to bring forward these new, these new manifestations, which is what the Ace of Bows is. It's a, it's a new beginning in manifestation form. But what's intriguing is that you see the different and various elements and, and what the majesty of source has always been for me, and I've tried to explain it in the beauty and the elegance that's always been offered to me, is that in any one specific symbol, we have the elegance of source weaving us a tapestry of wisdoms and gifts and stories that within the substantial grounding and the weight that the rock offers, the rock is as one with this entire picture as is the bow or the arrow or the tree or the branches or the little rock here or the leaf there, that they are all in cohesion of this agreement. They're all in cohesion of the, the moment that this arrow touches the ground it is creating in and of itself an alchemic experience and that all of these aspects are in agreement they're in the flow of this beautiful experience of what's happening here and it's no different than when you come up with um, a beautiful inspiration that inspiration is fed through the higher self it's fed through the greater the greater soul contract that you hold as a being and that all that you are in the experience for what i see in this is that you are this entire experience. You are the experience of all that is encapsulated here. You are merely perceiving it at one moment to create that arrow that goes into the ground where that spark of the idea actually hits the paper or that pen hits the paper and the story begins. But we create all of these tools and all of these experiences around it to help us tell the story. But you are it all in energetic form. You are the tree and the trunk that helps ground that manifestation to take place. You are this fallen trunk and this, this tree. You are the rocks that have had the flow of the water through the river. Um, you are the background and you are the smoke that comes from this spark of the passion, the descending energy with the ascending energy that reaches up to the sky to get those higher inspirations from the higher councils to bring it down into this beautiful earthly manifestation that takes all of this for it to occur. And so it's allowing us to understand that we are a part of and need and have the necessity for all aspects of Gaia to bring our manifestations to form. She offers great consciousness and wisdom within all of our manifestations, whether they be medicinal, whether they be healing, whether they be a quiet retreat somewhere, whether they be allowing us to understand the movement of trees and how, how um, we are those emulations of um, moving um, Gaia consciousness, Gaia elements, nature elements, forms, and spirit, all in human essence. And so it's allowing us to understand that the concept of a new idea takes much to come into form. We in human form just may wake up one morning and have the inspiration through the gratitude and the, the joy of our higher self offering it to us, the grander part of us. So our soul is all that we see in this one card, although it's grander than that, but we're giving it to you as an example. The soul is all aspects. So 
if this idea began here up at this branch, this branch will feed it down to the roots, will tell the rock, will tell all of these aspects. This is God consciousness speaking to God consciousness. And all aspects of this, before it hits the, the physical mind to come into play until the idea is finally struck to the paper or the wood and the hammer are struck in the physical form, if we're using tools to build a house or to build something. It's taken all of this before it touches here to let you know that this is the this is only in our eyes and how we perceive it is only this one aspect but it's far more grand than that and so this reflection is telling me now the holy mother father and the holy source creators and spirit and, and source are telling me that um remind yourselves of how vast you are that this point of manifestation has occurred in from many other lifetimes and has been stirring and been held in your field or been held in the chakras or the dna and it takes many activations and it takes that beautiful flow and that beautiful marriage in that story until it's put into it's put into form and so allow all parts of what you're experiencing to be a part of the grand story that you are because it wouldn't be the same if this rock wasn't here or that rock or that rock and that whole picture allow every aspect of what's happening in every moment to be nurtured and honored and blessed and balanced because it's all source it's all source coming together so that you can see that flame that is that beautiful idea that beautiful inspiration that beautiful book that will help others whatever it might be that is your excitement your soul's excitement your soul is all that you are and it will feed as many ideas as it can until that blade and that arrow is hit to that other piece of element because that's alchemy and so allow all that you are to be nurtured and honored and blessed and, and um, be, be, um, be appreciative and be free flowing with who you are, because there's so much going on behind the scenes that we are just only seeing a certain part of it. And this is what shamanic tarot is really exciting for me is we get that grander view of what's really going on and we release the limitations of who we thought we were. We release the, the baggage. We release the um, smallness of, um, and we say smallness in the way that we've judged ourselves. We don't say it in the way that it's any less important because as we've, uh, we've always offered in all of our um, teachings and healings is that even the smallest aspect is source and it's required within this party of co-creation. It's required in the party of the alchemy. And if we create from an alchemic perspective that all is source, then it's done from the aspect that has always meant to be through the understanding of the Christ consciousness and higher light programs is through benevolent, reverent respect for all life. Because we're understanding that it takes all, that we can't judge one or the other. We can't judge the shadow and only seek the light. Because we need that shadow for us to see what's going on. <laughs> that's, how we, that's how we create that light. It's from going through all that we've been through to say, hey, that, that one idea didn't work, that one idea didn't work, whatever it was whatever you're moving through, we can connect these shamana, shamanic um, symbolisms in any way you so choose. It can be an issue at work. It can be an issue within the family, whatever it is. But we need all aspects to come to a higher vibratory experience of who we are. The reunification of all that we are as all that we are. That's so beautiful. So this is a new beginning, a new beginning, a new, a new wisdom, a new information, a new idea a new experience to be held in a grander perspective of the all, of who we are, and all the elements that you are going within it. Because you know as a shaman you're coming forward, you know as a healer, you know as a practitioner, whatever it is that you so desire to move forward with, you know that it's going to take all the elements to bring forward everything that you desired to experience, because it's you. You wanted to experience yourself more than what you were a moment ago. And the next one that we have is the hooded man. And the hooded man is similar to, um, to the, the hermit. And um, for the greater symbolisms of Gaia, and we can't forget the, the oneness with Gaia as who we are. And it truly expands our universal hearts, the codes, the light codes within us are waiting for Gaia's activation, our Gaia energy, Gaia consciousness wisdoms. And so, um, the you know, I still use the Rider Waite, but not as often as I use um, more more expansive decks that offer the energy of stories within them um, in a way that I can relate. This is just a personal preference. Um, 
but this one again the elements um, with the new beginning of that one card that we saw there's much being offered to us now and much of it is the expansiveness of who we are to see ourselves in the all and release all judgment and limitation that's how true healing occurs but what is really lovely for me that's calling to me right now is this um, little bird and I've always been really connected with birds and I communicate with birds and nature and animals um, but this bird is a part of um, the what I'm getting on this is what so many are moving through is the family, the friends, the coworkers that may be seeing that there's people around them that are changing and how we often are finding now that we require greater self-care, that we require greater autonomy, that we require greater, um, um, greater self-sufficiency um, in following our own path. And that might cause others to kind of step back and question and, and just look and pause and ponder at what this person might be going through. What this person is excited to explore that seems so solitary and that what used to be okay before is not okay now. And what's really okay now is just becoming in the solitude of, of nature and the solitude of oneness to further explore how truly vast those moments are and can be. For the expansive process that I've written about in my books, there is a process and a cycle and, and everything is cyclical in the universe. Evolution is cyclical. There'll be things that will drop away. There'll be things that you'll want to open up to integrate and begin practicing and behaving the sacred living, um, however you want to choose to define it or call it. But there's always those cycles. And so we, we require cycles in which we break away from what was, and we are inspired by the higher mind, which is the source energy, which is always by the light and the lantern, is the higher self and the soul within to say, where is it that you're leading me? I don't know what this next step is, but I'm ready to take that next step. And many of us are, are on that path in which we're being inspired and even often jostled into creating those new paths and that next step into the unknown. And there will be others that will be standing by and watching. The environment will be standing by and watching. The environment understands that this must be done to create those new vibrational patterns. This must be done to create those, those new healing practices. This must be done to create new healing tools, new educational tools, new banking systems, whatever it might be that this, this unique energy is moving into. It's required. It's the light within. It's the soul song. It's the energies of all that we are a source claiming our right and our birthright to explore, express, and experience more of who we are. And it can't be done unless we're going within and it will startle others and it will have others back up and say, this doesn't fit because you're not in that same program that you were before. You're not doing the same things you were before. We can't access you the way we used to. And it will cause those others to create that, that uncertainty. And that's okay because that's part of their growth too. Evolution is about the growth of all things. And as long as we're following our heart's calling and our soul's calling, then the all will be served. That bird will, will learn to find that next, um, that next food that perhaps this person used to feed. And that bird is thinking, well, you used to feed me your berries in the morning when you sat and ate, but where are you going? I, knew, I rely on you. And the, this um, understanding, the conscious understanding is that you'll find what you need. We all have what we need within. So you'll find it. And the bird knows, but we're using the symbolism as a reflective of what's going on in our everyday life and how solitary and how beautiful it can be, but that things must change. Things must find their new road. They must find the new path because that's evolution. We are in a point of um, human evolution, a planetary evolution that's never occurred before. We're being offered light codes. We're being offered energies. We're being offered celestial alignments within our galaxies that are truly beyond what anybody can understand. And we're being offered that so that we can access as much light as possible and truly let go of limitation, fear, greed, and self-doubt in every way. Subjugation to be left behind in every way. And the only way to do that is to go within and honor the call of the soul that takes us away from our natural every everyday duties or routines and it it simply must change and it can change in small ways and it can change in big ways because each of us will be inspired in different ways but that those new templates that we are creating through our inner light work is what all will walk upon in future generations hundreds and hundreds of years from now and hundreds and thousands and billions of people from now we create those light pathways and it's important that we see the grander perspective of what is truly moving and to know that spirit will always offer a win-win for all involved always because that's benevolent evolution always it may not always be easy 
for others to stand by and watch change occur because change is rarely easy and every every aspect and every person will be on a different journey every person will have their different needs and their different desires but that's how we're all changing and evolving as well is how can we compromise and meet each other's needs so that everybody has as much liberation and sovereignty as possible the person in the road will eventually have their higher calling and we used to have those old ways of thinking the old paradigms of thinking that parents would sacrifice everything for their children but the children wouldn't have those greater light programs to walk on if the parents didn't have to move upon their spiritual paths and honor it. So they, there, are, there are times in our evolutionary experience, which I'm moving through right now, that paths have to be taken. <laughs> That's how my soul feels. This is a must. This is my spiritual must. I simply must teach and offer my shamanic energies and healing gifts. I simply must. And it's not going to look the same how it's always looked and it will change and we'll find compromise and we'll find our evolutionary medium where everybody's feeling, you know, greater balance and it will change and shift. But it's a spiritual calling that I knew at a, at a very, um, at a very early age that I was here to co-create with Gaia and with consciousness of spirit and source. And I'm, I'm getting the door opening. And that door opening is spirit calling, saying it's ready for this next step now because you have those codes and gifts and you have those sounds and tones that will help create the fields that your children and your children's children and your children's 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 children will walk on. So there has to be some level of detachment that every master will experience on their path, and Jesus did and all the other masters, where their spiritual calling holds that greater calling because we don't understand the light programs and how it affects all planets, all galaxies, the all. So it's up to us to trust unconditionally and unwaveringly what you're being offered by spirit. And that's always what occurs when we present ourselves with the hermit energy, because there's a higher calling. There's a deeper understanding of who we are within these new beginnings. And so that's profound. Thank you. Thank you, Gaia. And thank you, Source Energy. I just got to shift my legs here. So I hope you're enjoying the card so far. So please feel free to put your comments down. And your, um, any questions that you have, um, we'll create a chat. And I'm just loving these, these energies. I put a lot of cards down, so I'm not sure how much time we have. Um, oh, wow, We've, these are all some of my favorite cards. This is the Five of Bows, and this is Empowerment. Um, now, what's really calling me right now is, um, so there's a story coming through, and it's um, a story of um, a tribe. This is the story of the tribe, and the tribe um, is showing me that they were on this beautiful sacred hill. And they'd always looked at this hill on the other side, as they would talk about their their daily journeys, you know, the storytelling that we've often talked about in Ascension is really important that it's going to be brought back. Um, it was part of our offerings as well is shamanic storytelling, the energetic storytelling of who we are as peoples moving through Ascension and Awakening. And this tribe is sitting here and they're, they're sharing their stories and they're sharing their day's experiences and they're sharing their wisdoms and their informations and, and they're sharing and communicating their intelligences. And this is how evolution occurs, but we've lost the storytelling over many years. Um, in some manners, um, the families have been so busy and we've co-created an experience where um, working becomes far more important than the sharing of, um, of our hearts and our souls through the through storytelling. And a lot of the ancient tribes and groups had lost much of their shamanic wisdoms um, because of the loss of storytelling. So this is why it was important for me to also offer this channel as well, so that we return to the um, divine, simple energies of shamanic, intuitive sharing. And so this tribe is sitting there and, and they're enjoying the beautiful day and there's, there's clouds in the sky that are shaping stories within their stories and the consciousness of source and everything and it's consciously, consciously all co-creating a beautiful story together. And they're showing themselves um, this hill and as they're sitting there talking, if you can envision the tribal people sitting here talking, it doesn't matter what they look like or, but these are the symbolisms of the tribe for me. And they're showing themselves how they've created this visual picture through their stories. They're each sharing a part of the experience and this is becoming this image that's on the hill. 
And many of us have all, all experienced um, and we've seen pictures and images of crop circles. Crop circles are the imprintation, imprint, imprints, um, conscious imprints of, of vibrations. And this is why they've been studied and so challenged to you know, have a concrete answer. Although those that understand consciousness and understand energy understand that it's the commingling and the co-entanglement and the um, harmonization of energy, the energy of humanity, the story of humanity or where they sit in the moment and the energy of Gaia, the energy of the universe and all of the other beings that are here for humanity's evolution create a conscious imprint story, which becomes the crop circle. So this tribe is sitting here on this hill that they've sat on probably a hundred times before, but their joy to share and their joy to be with one another and their joy to move through the struggles that they've moved through to create the self-empowerment that is, is, that is within each and every one of us through the new beginnings, you know, from the Ace of Bows here, from the Hermit, they're now coming to this beautiful celebratory experience in which all of the struggles and challenges that they've occurred on their daily journeys to sit in this beautiful amalgamation of God consciousness working within the clouds, within the air, and their sharing of the stories of how they've all empowered one another to create that beautiful experience that they created on their journeys and what it means to them to be one with Gaia. And why what I'm sensing now, what I'm getting now is that it was very important for this tribe to we're giving the mirror to you is that oftentimes we've had such um, um, disregard or lack of intention and lack of attention to how we have lived with Gaia and we've used the land in degradation perspectives and energies. This is showing me the mirror that these imprints and these crop circles are done in great reverence and respect. Because this tribe is in the center of that tribal experience and story through their empowering of all that they've gone through in their struggles and in their challenges, they understood their oneness with Gaia to co-create whatever it was that they were co-creating and celebrating as they sat and shared their stories. And so the consciousness appreciation from Gaia was allowing the appreciation and the, the, the energies from their stories, the energies of God consciousness to be this imprint of this energy here. So it was a reverence. It was a story of reverence. It was a story of we have been here and we've co-created with you, Guy, and we've made this land sacred. We're allowing this sacredness to be a part of the story and so that many others can see how sacred this story is for us to dance and for us to sing and to show that our tools are a part of reverence, of being in oneness, how we co-create in honor of one another, how we co-create in oneness of one another. And it's truly empowering because what we're moving away from, and this is, this is coming in as a, a, as a story here, is that humanity is awakening to the understanding that for true oneness and for true unity, we are all one. And that's truly empowering. When we assist one another in seeing and becoming and living in oneness, it's not one person has any more than another. One person does not have any more gain than one another or control over one another. There's no story of one must do it my way or see it my way. It's oneness in the allowance of sovereignty so that each person has the right to live and breathe and co-create so that that sovereignty is maintained and judgment is, is released. That's when reverence truly occurs because reverence is that we are all one. And when we start judging or creating those separative energies, then that's when dissension and the fear behaviors step in and so that's the um that's the energy of our oneness they know that they cannot exist without gaia and gaia cannot exist without the human energy she's come here as a planet in service to humanity she's been upgraded and uploaded with codes to assist humanity in moving into higher perspectives higher evolutionary um, programs of existence and exploration through her and it and it should be done, you know, can be done, um, um, is allowing to be done through the concepts of our exploration. We are exploring new ways to live in oneness with Gaia, with ourselves, because she is us and we are her. And we will go through those, we will go through those um, growth experiences and, um, you know, we'll fall and we'll make, um, we'll make changes in the road. 
what didn't work and what worked. But in every step of the way, we're going to gain greater consciousness and awareness of our oneness with her and how integral it is for the future of our species and planet to do so. So this is empowerment. So we end this beautiful new beginning, new wisdoms, new inspirations, the alchemy of the all coming together. I mean, how beautiful, perfectly fitting it is for this first reading. And then the hermit, the hooded man, to go through, the, to go through that, that, that beauty and that power it takes to step outside the norm, to truly create from your own heartfelt whole soul song, to step forward in your path, regardless of what anybody else thinks or does or says, or how different it looks from what you've done before. As many of us um, first waivers are being presented with um, stepping into the unknown and it will be totally different than what we ever thought and having to be okay with changing your story about what ascension thought it should look like or what your path thought it should look like because the hooded man is all about moving in utter unwavering faith that you are step in step with source creator you have all you need that light is within you and you will be guided exactly where you need to be in every moment and what has been a big part of the teachings over the last six months is really having that presence of heart. That's all you'll need because you'll be shown and you'll be, you'll be gifted with what you need in the moment that you need it. That's living in the presence of your heart because these energies will accelerate. And the ego and the lower mind can get really caught up in the fanfare of all the drama that's being released because the ego wants to keep things the same. It doesn't want things to change. It wants to hold things back in what feels safe not even knowing that what is ahead is miraculous and um, evolutionarily um, ex um, ex exciting, you know, because the ego can't see that far, the higher mind can. And that's what that light represents. And so the first tree that we're going to look at, wow, look at this. I'm so blessed. I've been just working with these cards. This one's new. Wow, look at this. Love that. So that's the Star of David. That's the Hawthorn tree. And the Hawthorn tree. That's just a beautiful tree. Beautiful visual, hey? I'm just going to leave it there. I'm gonna, this is a new, new book. I'm going to tap into... Um, It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The book um, honors this as um, a tree of miracles. Um, and I'll, I'll just read it, what it says. It says, the world is full of miracles if you have the eyes to see them. Connect with the magic of your own senses and the power of nature. Rejoice as each new season arrives, savoring it for everything that it can offer you. And so um, how beautiful are these cards to be pulled on this very first show? Um, and I'll go into my own. Um, symbolisms and this is the um, it's Jane Struthers the wisdom of the tree oracle love her tarot um, her oracles and so the majesty and I've often um, in many of the last um, I do sacred land travel and in sacred land activations with energies and with spirit and I've often find the, the miracles that exist in um, the pictures that were drawn through source energy, through the shamanic energies, all um, energies of your, as you become aware of something and awaken within it, it changes. Um, and so there is the shamanic storytelling through nature. As we awaken to our experience within it, it changes. And then we end up seeing the miracle um, faces in the cloud or the celestial friends and the angels with us in the trees. And they end up becoming, they come forward to us because we're allowing our hearts not to, not to, to release all the stories that we've been taught and told that we must see it to believe it first. No, it's about walking with that open heart and knowing that you're a soul of the all. With that and essence and understanding as many of the masters did like Jesus, it's that, that, it's that open heart experience that you walk as source. And that's why there was the miracles that were created as they were, because that was the unwavering faith and knowing that you are source and you create those miracles from within, from within first. And this is why it's such a beautiful entanglement to see that star of David. The star of David is as above, so below, and that we are all corners of the sacred geometry in cohesion with all that is source. And what is within the center 
is the, the beautiful um, harmonization and the marriage of divine ma female and divine male and the heavens and the earth coming together. Because this is where we co-create from. This is the center of the soul, the solar plexus and the throat chakra and the divine sacred heart, the higher heart and the one human heart. All working in harmonization of knowing who thyself is. I know thyself. I am grounded in union with the earth. I'm grounded in union with all aspects of nature. And through my sacred love and through my sacred awareness and oneness, there will be miracles brought forward today. This is what this tree stands for, the hawthorn tree. Thank you. And the next one is the ash. That's beautiful. I've already got a story coming out for that, but I'll wait until I read it. I wait till I read it from the book. Well, this is a brand new one. I just, I just got this the other day. Wow, how beautiful. These cards are just so symbolic. This, the, the symbolic meaning for this one, <clears throat> um, according to the author, is mastery. My wood has many uses because of its strong yet flexible nature. For centuries, humans have associated me with the magical powers to repel negative energies and to heal children. I exude the surgery of the sap, the sugary sap, and I can help make your life sweeter. Gain mastery over all that you are and who are you accepting yourself to be? Can you be fearless in looking at all aspects of who you are? So again, what we said earlier, all aspects of you will present itself to you for your acceptance. Because we can't change what we're encircling within until we acknowledge it. If there's chaos or, or um, energies in your life that are causing you um, frustration or concern, then part of self-care is to sit down and go, how can I sort this out? How can I begin to acknowledge what's going on? I accept it. I accept my part within it. And how can I begin to heal myself and begin to, to create anew? So that's mastery. Every moment that someone, something presents itself, because it will in every moment. And how aware are we to say, this is what I've created. Where is my vibration sitting? What are my beliefs about who I am? And how can I release and let go and become a more full, exploratory, infinite being of light that I am? Because I am. So it's about returning to our I amness. It's a returning to our soul essence of who we are as infinite beings of light, not limited beings of belief, fear, judgment, and limitation. So each of us will be required to return to mastery, sit down and have that light, be the part of your inquisition and your exploration. Who do I want to be? And what is this light showing me? That there's a far grander field of play for you. If you so choose, there's no judgment if you don't. But that if you're irritated and agitated and um, depressed or suppressing anything, then it will come forward until it is resolved because that's evolution. And you have teams and the Holy Spirit and Mother, Father and the creators. You have all energies and healing teams to assist you. And part of these videos will be assisting you in doing so. And much, much of our Ascension teachings um, have offerings on that as well. And so... Allowing yourself to understand that your emotions are there as a guide to assist you. What is it that I'm feeling? And how can I return to compassion, unconditional love for me? Following your soul's gifts and your soul's calling so that you love thyself first and allow that to be the example for all others. To let go of what no longer serves and allow the leaves to touch the ground as they fall to be released and put back into the earth to be regenerated into something new, which is the releasing of, of old beliefs that no longer serve. And there will always be someone to come and sit on this log here to say, wow, I, I honor, I honor you and how you stand. You see the light that's coming through these trees. You stand in all of your grace. You stand in all of your glory, how you reach up to the heavens. You reach out to the heavens and everybody is being offered a part of your elegance and your grace. And I will sit here and I will just honor you and I will be with you and I will watch you because it's just the elegance of grace of you being all that you are in your gracefulness. There's nothing to hide. There's nothing to be, um, to be small in. You're beautiful, you're grand, and you're graceful. And there will always be something that will light your way to show you so that this branch can unfurl. That can come up from the, from the depths of your soul, from the depths of your DNA so that you share all that you are from the earth and all the way up to the heavens, all the way up to all that you are and reach out and be a part of a community far grander than you thought. 
So that's beautiful and that's mastery. So we have magic and mastery. Wow, that's profound. This is just so profound for me right now. And this is eucalyptus. And just look at the imagery on that. How beautiful is that? So many of you may be getting activated as we're going through this because that was the intention is that whatever, whatever will be needed will be offered. So just know that that spirit, that's the perfection of God, perfection of Holy Mother. Um, Wow, that's perfect. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. Well, we've been just talking about that too. Um, how this is just how beautiful spirit is. So this is this the eucalyptus tree. Um, the symbolism by the author is all about balance. The history of um, the ancient history of this tree um, has survived by adapting to its environment. It's very transitional. It can transition to whatever the environment conditions are. And it's a very sturdy and steadfast tree. Um, I can show you how to live with wisdom and honesty by establishing your own balance. And this, this tree is about balance and, and grounding and anchoring balance in your life, in your attitude and how those around you can also gain by your own balance. Because as you create balance, you're offering that vibration for the all. Try to strike the right balance between overt enthusiasm and lack of interest. So maintain your energy frequencies has been really key because we're going through portal energies right now. And the portal energies are allowing us to, especially with the celestial alignments with Pluto and Saturn and um, Jupiter, major, major planets that are releasing um, karmic um, energies, a lot of karmic density, a lot of karmic um, releases from the DNA, from the Akashic fields, from the Gaia consciousness fields, humanity consciousness fields. and so it's requiring everyone to recenter really quickly um, as there's a release is coming through, negative energy is coming through, breaking away from old programs, old paradigms to really recenter and create that balance for you because everybody's balance will be different. And what I'm seeing here, the story that's coming out from here is that as we create balance, it's always within the center of who we are. And then all of the branches and everything that can move from within that center is free flowing to, to do what it needs to do. But there's always that centered anchoring with Gaia because our center is also anchored with Gaia. And we see the path here that there will always be a path presented when you're in your center, because when you're not in your center and you're chaotically moving all about, what is presented before you cannot be seen because that's the ego. The ego allows you to stay within old programs way back here. There's no judgment on any of it, but if you're here for a reason, it's for, so that you may explore how required balance is for wellness, for health, for mental health, for physical health, for emotional health it's it's really required so that you see the path before you many children um, right now are moving through the quickening of their DNA as their parents move through their DNA releases and their Akashic releases and so on um, the, the, the um, soul fragments that are being harmonized and so on so as these children accelerate in their energies it's really important that we remind them about the earth and how important it, it helps them ground because otherwise they do get um, even more active and um, it, it would look to us as if they're hyper, but they're not. Um, and that can cause them to slip and fall quite a bit um, because they're not grounding. They're way up here in their heads, but their bodies are here on the ground and they can't see what's in front of them because they're just, they're up here all the time. So it's really important for the crystalline children and the indigo children as you, as these accelerated energies to really focus throughout the day on just have a look outside and, you know, put your feet into the sand and how does it feel? Even visualize those, those aspects of grounding are really helpful. And at nighttime for sleeping, just have um, an audio about grounding, just play before they go to sleep because they can visualize really, really well. And it just takes a few seconds. So, and have them practice it at school when they're on the playground so that they don't come home with bumps and bruises. Um, it helps them in honoring their body as a multidimensional field of light and energy. So that they're also recognizing their oneness with Gaia at the earliest of ages. Um, and they can do it really quickly. They get it. Um, they're really good with visualization. And the other key that's coming up for me here, the shamanic symbolism, is this beautiful horn that's just so beautifully, delicately laid here as if it was put by source. And so what this is saying to me is that um, the bird is symbolizing musical sound. And, and what I was shown last year through the summer um, 
admiring um, through the birds in our forest here and all the little animals scurrying about and they're having their own plan about their moving about co-creation and all of them would work synergistically with one another um, each animal would have its own specific role that it would play within the forest the forest helping eat the forest regenerate if a tree would fall then insects would come along and the bugs would come along and different animals would come along to help that tree biodegrade or live within or whatever it was doing there was plans and, and synergies within the forest and so this bird is reminding me that this horn is for the co-creation of sound for the human because the human would use the horn the bird wouldn't need the horn <laughs> The tree has its own energetic vibrational song, but this horn, it, for me, is placed there symbolically, shamanically, for the human. For the human to know that there are the forests and the nature animals that are beckoning a communication and beckoning a story and beckoning that flute player, that horn player, to come forward. Whether we use our own, our own sound through our throats, whether we use the all that we are as spirit, um, to do it authentically, to do it from the soul of who we are, to, to create this multi-dimensional play of energy that helps all life within the forest because what i was shown through my own watching of the forest and how all the animals were working together and the sounds that were made in their um that the hour that i was watching them is what came forward to me through the gaia consciousness was that the bird song and the insect song all work together in the consciousness energies of the forest and it's very sacred it helps the plants come to life. It helps the flowers bloom because sound is integral throughout the universe for evolving life. They all know what they're doing. So it's, it's allowing us to also awaken to our essence of life through sound and through tone to become one with the environments that have always been calling us, that we have been separated from and turned off to from our limiting beliefs. And that is the beautiful experience. And this is about balance, how we rebalance ourselves through sacred sound and tone, which is what our ASMR videos will also offer. Our shamanic interpretation of ASMR through universal sound and light language and our ancient light language and alphabet of the art. So that's beautiful. So thank you. Wow, those cards have been powerful. And what a story they're weaving for us, isn't it? And the three animals, just to, just to finish this off, I hope it hasn't been too long. And wow, how beautiful this is, which is what we've been talking about. The first one that we'll offer here is the loon. And this is about the intuitiveness. And so the story that's coming right away for me is this bird in front here is the mother loon with the babies in the back. And see, the, the, all of the babies are, are um, learning from the mother in different ways. Um, they're learning about the environment from the mother, how the, how the mother just gracefully moves through the water without effort, without the, um, um, the, great, the great flapping, if you will. And they're learning about the cohesiveness, the oneness, and how the beautiful water just, just moves around the bird. And she's intuitively just knowing where she's going. There's no search, searching. She's, her head's not back and forth. It's straight ahead on her mission. It's straight ahead on what she knows to be true within her heart and just moving the legs so elegantly so that the water moves around her. She intuitively knows what she's doing and she's, she's teaching those little ones. She's allowing those little ones to see the embrace and the elegance that is source, that is moving about life with grace, with elegance, with ease, through your intuitive knowing, through your intuitive trust to know who you are within the process. And allow that everything will be offered to you that you need when you need it. That's the intuitive understanding of our oneness with all life. If you send out a heartfelt need with, from your heart, the universe begins manifesting it. How come it never occurs to you or shows up to you is because of the blocks that we put in about our belief systems and our limitations, our worthiness to receive or to be in flow, natural flow of source. And so I'll read that. It says, listen to the song of your soul. And that's what we've been talking about is following the soul song. Trust your intuition as you have a way of knowing. You have an innate way of knowing that's within the DNA. And as we begin to practice the intuitive gifts by sound, um, self-care, reflection, the cycles of ascension that we've talked about, seeking out new experiences that, that really bring your heart joy and happiness, and then integrating the lessons, having that daily self-integration and reflection period, you begin to build your trust faculties of who you are as a spirit being. 
You begin to trust yourself as a spirit because you're given, you're given information and wisdoms all the time, but it's because we don't often practice them. Um, it's never been a part of our societal experience that we've been shown or modeled. Emerge from the busy life and seek more solitude. Recognize that you are a unique and loved aspect of creation. So creation needs you. Creation needs your intuitive gifts just to follow your heart because your song is needed in the forest to co-create. Your song is needed in the world so that others may hear your sounds and tones and have it awaken their consciousness. That's what I've been shown. So many of the sounds that I make um, assist the crystalline children because a lot of it uh, clears the fields. Sometimes when sounds are made, even if it's across the world, they help clear the densities within the fields because they're ancient sounds that are used to co-create with life because it's light language and it's sacred sound. And there are those that are brought here to do so. And isn't this one beautiful? This one is infinite possibilities of unicorns. And I've, I had a radio show a couple of years ago and I said, when we reach a certain vibration of consciousness, the unicorns will return. And it will be when the children's collective is brought up to their, their, their level of appreciation and gratitude. That's my sensing. That's my own personal belief is that when we honor and bring the children's collective up to the same level of our oneness, the same level of our honor and valueness, how we value ourselves and not have it as a separative energy, just as we did the aged or the native peoples, um, any collective within our society that we deem um, in any way that's different, um, we will see these magical creatures and animals return because it's about the oneness. It's about bringing back the majesty and the children are the ones that allow us to see the miracles in every moment, the infinite possibilities that they come forward with. Make no mistake about it. They're here to teach us. And how may we value their story? Because the children's collective for me is connected with the unicorn consciousness. And it's about infinite possibilities. So how can we value and create greater voice for them? Because they are so magical. And this one says, you are the sovereign of the seen and unseen worlds. So there's, again, we're talking about the soul. The soul aspect of you has many gifts that it's showing you and living through you. You might not see your soul, but it's absolutely offering to live through you if you will allow it and call it forward and let it live through you to offer you the gifts that are totally unseen that others may not understand, but that assist the evolution of a human collective that's on the precipice of moving into something completely unknown. And the collective of the universal energies are really cheering and celebrating right now because they can see what light we are creating through such expansive storytelling. So thank you. The magic of love surrounds you. Beauty transforms you. Listen to the spirits of light. Abandon the darkness. Go beyond the ordinary and become the legendary. So how many myths and how many stories will be created from your exploration of your soul, of your infinite potential? What legacy of light will you leave? Will you co-create? We'll be honored from generations from now because you followed your soul's call. So it's okay to have those moments where you doubt and you fall back into those old patterns of self-doubt or maybe disbelief, but that you will always be called by the soul to step up again and again and again to know that you are infinite and you will always be offered opportunities to explore your infinite potential. There will always be those potentials brought forward to you so that when it's time, always divine timing, you will be offered that door or opportunity that allows you to stretch and spread your wings and soar in a brand new way. Because it's needed, it's required. We're not, we're not creating and recreating third dimensional realities. That's not evolution. We're creating fifth and higher dimensional realities, which requires us to behave and act and totally release all that holds us back. What limitations and beliefs are we ready to let go of? Because we truly are infinite. And what does infinite feel like? So don't put any boundaries on what you think you're capable of. Allow it to be open. If you define yourself, allow it to be open. I'm infinite today. What does that feel like? <laughs> Let's talk about that. Let's muse that. So open into your infinite potentiality. How beautiful. Oh, I love this. I had a meditation with the bison just the other day, and it's about abundance. Bison. That's beautiful. And this one says, the sacred buffalo, cloak me in your wisdom. Keep me warm through the storms of life. Fill my life with goodness. Teach me the way of gratitude and prayer. For 
allowing yourself to open and be grateful for all that you already are, all that you already have, allows for the abundance to flow. And through the open heart, through the open aspect of who you are as a shaman, as an infinite vessel of light and love walking in human form, you allow all of the wisdoms, all of your intuitiveness, those divine activations of your new gifts to flow through you and be activated exactly when they're needed. So you don't necessarily have to go hunting and having that energy that is, when is this going to happen? Because that, again, that's re reverting and converting back to the ego energies of safety, of being in trying to control everything. What they've really been showing me lately is that can you walk through every moment of life without having any control or seeming as if you have to have control on how it unfolds? That's living in presence. That right now, everything that you've done is creating this moment now, the energy vibration that you sit with that, and all will be received and offered to you. Can you trust that? That's living in unconditional trust with source. That's where we're moving, into that unconditional trust that every moment can be nurtured. And so I wanted to leave that as the message. Um, can, you, can, you, can you be okay with the perfection of every moment? Can you be okay with the perfection of you in every moment? Can you be okay with the perfection that is Gaia and the universal consciousness that is living through you and showing you this divine song in every moment? In every moment, there is a journey. In every moment, there, is, there will be an opportunity for you to be a part of the song and the story. In every moment, there'll be others that might have to be um, let go of so that they can find their way and they can learn their lessons and they can explore who they are in the most expansive and beautiful and way that their soul had divine, designed as well. Because um, what I was often told is, is that um, oftentimes we wanna do so much for our kids that we end up making choices that don't necessarily help them out necessarily. Because when you do so much for them, they never learn how to do what they need to do and learn for themselves. And it's, it's understanding of that delicate and fine line of when and how to guide and to do it through an inspirational and empowering and encouraging perspective as opposed to doing everything for everyone and having it not be reciprocated or, or, um, or understood as the grander soul's lesson that they've come to learn. They've come to learn how to use their own energy fields and work with their own energy fields, not have you do it for them. But it's things that we can teach and learn from because this is new for all of us. So we've never been through ascension before on this planet <laughs> in this way. So there will always be a song for you to get involved with. There will always be a new path for you um, to step into the unknown. So allow yourself to know that you will always be provided for when you're tapping into who you are at, at the level of your soul. You will always ha have infinite and magical possibilities presented to you. You're infinite and you will see these magical mis mysteries unfold to you. You will have the mastery that you need and you will have the balance and the honor that you need. You will have all that you need. Because you are. And how beautiful that all of these have come out today to show us this beautiful story that threads together in shamanic storytelling through shamanic tarot. So we thank you so much for joining us today in this beautiful um, first offering, January 13th. 13th is the, mother, is the energy of the Divine Mother, the Divine Feminine, and the Goddess energy. And so I wanted to bring this forward um, the sound that we're going to use from the sacred alphabet of the ark, the light vocables, um, with the, the, um, the sound that I wanted to bring about today is, is abet, abet, and it means heart resonance. And so just place your hands upon your heart if you so desire. And as I make this sound through sacred tones, allow all of our discussions that we've shared today and all the stories that we've shared today, just be open within your resonance of who you are and allow the activations to be perfectly um, innately um, in the moment of what you need when you need it and how you need it. It might be an awakening you might get from your dream from our sharings today. It might be a new gift that might be activated or it might be an answer to, a, to an issue that you've been working with in your everyday life on how to resolve something or transcend something. But these wisdoms are the codes of information through our storytelling and offering that perhaps can assist in some way through what you're moving through as a higher vibrational being of multidimensional light. And it begins at the heart resonance. We resolve, we manifest, we co-create, we heal all through the resonance of the heart and why it's so important and why we're starting it with our very first show today. So the sacred alphabet sound used from our very sacred languages, um, abet.
And just understand that these sounds go into the Gaia consciousness. They go into our group sacred connection today. And know that the Holy Spirit and your divine source and your soul is all within you. Your healing teams. Just open and enjoy. We anchor these consciousness storytellings and energies and excitements and joys for who we are as human into the sacred sands and soils of Gaia through her heartbeat. May we all sing together in a sacred song of oneness. May our hearts and our resonance of who we are as spirit explore, express, and experience all that we are in new ways through our storytelling, through our sharing, through our caring for one another, through our bringing the planet to new frequencies and energies of light and encapsulation of who we are as pure love and pure joy and excitement of who we are as the children of the universe. Thank you and namaste.